growth hormone, and testosterone. Let's begin with these anabolic hormones. We've heard so much about them. When you train, you wanna do this with your sets and reps, this with your, with your rest intervals to get this huge growth hormone release or this huge testosterone release. Well, when you do those things with your rest intervals, do these hormones increase? If they do increase, that's great, but does it actually matter? Oftentimes people will just look at mechanisms or just look at outcome measures. We need to look at both. Do these mechanisms, do these hormones increase, and do they actually improve outcome measures? We'll also look at IGF-1, which we mentioned earlier. So growth hormone, right? Growth hormone is going to be released ultimately from the anterior pituitary. Now, from the hypothalamus, which we mentioned, remember the HPA axis, GnRH, or gonadotropin-releasing hormone, is released, binds to the anterior pituitary, and that releases growth hormone, which, which then has negative feedback to the hypothalamus. And then once that negative feedback set in, growth hormone stops being released. Once that stops being released, negative feedback is removed, and we have that process, just like we did with cortisol. Now, I'm sure you've heard that growth hormone is related to muscle growth. Well, let's take a look at this figure. This figure is from a call in 1999, and we can see on the y-axis, you have acute growth hormone release, and then on the x-axis, we have percentage increase in type 2 fibers. Now, there here was a significant relationship. If we can take a look at the dot all the way, the solid dot all the way on the top right, that's above the 50% increase on the x-axis, and up to the highest growth hormone release of about 20 there in the measurement. You can see that is a direct relationship between the acute growth hormone response and the increase in cross-sectional area or hypertrophy of type 2 fibers at the end of the study, saying on average, the changes in growth hormone after exercise correlated to the hypertrophy response at the end of the study. Is that convincing? Does that convince you that, hey, I need to structure my training so I can improve growth hormone acutely. If I get a spike in growth hormone after exercise, in the long term, that's gonna be good for skeletal muscle hypertrophy. Is that the case? Well, for a long time, people have recommended that we build training around this, that we say, all right, now let's figure out how we can improve growth hormone response following exercise, and then let's train like that. But I want you to think about this logically for a second. Growth hormone goes up immediately after exercise. Okay, that's true. But what else goes up immediately after exercise, right? Heart rate goes up. Does that mean that heart rate is a causative factor for muscle growth? I'll go run around the track for 10 miles. I'm not gonna do that. But I go run around the track for 10 miles. My heart rate goes up. That's good for muscle growth? Certainly not. Cardiac output goes up, right? Stroke volume, all the other things associated with aerobic exercise. Sympathetic activity goes up. Protein degradation goes up following resistance exercise. Does that mean my goal is to increase protein degradation every training session and I'll get a better hypertrophic response? No way, right? Acute GH is not the goal of training. A acute GH response is not anabolic unless it's outside of the physiological range. And this increase is not outside the physiological range. Rather, it's just a correlation. Growth hormone goes up in response to training. If you train hard, GH will go up. That's just one of the many things that increases acutely. That's not a causative factor. It doesn't mean you should schedule your training around that increase in GH. So we see the same thing here when we look at this study. But now we start to understand why or what type of training increases GH and why these recommendations have been made. So specifically, before we look at the graph here, the recommendations to in uh, increase GH have been what? Moderate to high repetitions with short rest intervals. That's also what you've been taught to increase skeletal muscle hypertrophy. We'll come back to that later on as well. But moderate to high repetitions with short rest intervals are what you've been taught for hypertrophy. So here's why. If you look at this first figure that's gonna be on your left, you can see there's two sessions here. There's session A, where subjects did 20 set, sets of one, and session B, where subjects did 10 sets of 10. It was a crossover design, meaning subjects came in one week and did one, and then the other week and did the other. And this is in the squat. Well, you can see in session B, right, where they did 10 sets of 10, where immediately following exercise for an hour, there's a huge spike in growth hormone. And then it comes back to baseline an hour following exercise. Following session A, the arrow on the bottom, there's just a very, very small increase in growth hormone, almost no change at all. Well, 20 sets of one is high intensity. 10 sets of 10 at 70% is high volume. So it's the volume that's driving the growth hormone response, not the intensity. So that's one reason you've been taught high volume for hypertrophy, which is true, right? High volume for hypertrophy is a good idea. 
But let's talk about why specifically high volume has been recommended to increase GH. If you look at the figure on blood lactate, this figure parallels the figure on the left very, very well. So we can see again, session B, 10 sets of 10 at 70%, increases lactate a lot, whereas session A, 20 sets of one, doesn't increase lactate at all. Well, why is this the case? There certainly is some sort of relationship between blood lactate and growth hormone, but what's going on? Well, blood lactate is a metabolite, so that increases first. When you exercise and you do high volume and you take short rest intervals, blood lactate won't have time to clear when it's produced by skeletal muscle. That means that you're acidic. When you're acidic, that is a measure of pH or hydrogens in a solution. When you have more hydrogens in a solution, right, pH levels will drop and you'll become acidic. Remember, how was growth hormone released? Let's go back for a moment, right? So growth hormone was released, you can see in the top box there, from the anterior pituitary by growth hormone releasing factor or growth hormone releasing hormone, interchangeable terms, binding to the anterior pituitary. When you're acidic or when pH drops, growth hormone releasing factor binds much better to the anterior pituitary. So in this case, the increase in blood lactate due to the high volume and short rest intervals is driving or increasing the acute GH response. Right? So the take home message is that moderate training to high intensity training or high volume, if you will, with moderate repetitions with low rest intervals acutely increases GH. But does this matter? Mm -hmm.